Hey there YouTubers, so I get asked a lot of questions on the channel, especially right now with 12th Gen Intel out there. People are asking me, you know, specific things. I love it. Keep those questions coming. We'll try and answer them. So one of the big ones that I've seen a bunch of times, and uh, we'll have to do another video for one of the other CPUs, but would I recommend the i5-12700F, or for that matter, the i7-12700? The answer is a big fat yes. All right. Now, there are reasons that you might want the 12700 versus the 12700F. Not really going to get into that. Obviously, one has integrated graphics, one does not. Certain applications or games with DX12, maybe the 12700 might outperform the 12700F. Um, you know, that's that's up for discussion. But as far as the CPUs I have here, right? And, there's some killer AMD CPUs in front of you. There are some killer older generations of Intel chips in front of us, and some you know you'd laugh at uh, today. But there are some i9s in there. There's other generation i7s. This thing is by far the best gaming CPU that I have, except for say the i5 12600K. All right. Now. Was it so great right out of the box, you know, putting in a motherboard? Did I get, hey, this is a, the best CPU? No. I had to spend a little time with it, all right? What was the first thing I did? Well, you know, people always want to know how it performs with the stock cooler. Uh, we played with, you know, this a little bit, maybe two hours. And at the end of two hours, I'm like, this thing is, is my problem. I need to get rid of it. So um, that brings, you know, maybe we can talk about tips for the i7 in a separate video. But we went and upgraded. So, uh, you know, with the LGA 1700 kit that I bought previously, upgraded the stock cooler to this Noctua NHU12S. Um, I currently has another Noctua on it, the NHU14S, so even better uh, attempts with that, right? So that was a big thing. Adjusting power limits, um, I was experiencing power limit throttling, okay? So that wasn't a great thing, right? Obviously we're losing performance. So from there, you know, what do we do? Well, we go in Intel's XTU or you can do it in the BIOS and then you adjust the power limits to unlimited. That got rid of the power limit throttling, but what else does that do? Well, as you're putting in more heat to the CPU via the CPU power connectors from your power supply, the amount of electric that's going in there, you know, I guess you'd say one of the byproducts basically is heat, right? Um, you know, some of that energy is, is used to do work and some of that energy becomes heat, right? But you know the amount of electric, one form of energy, coming in. Uh, the other, you know, goes off into some kind of work, and then the rest of it is, is basically heat, right? So those are, you know, basically that's what happens. So to deal with that, you need an upgraded CPU cooler. Now, other things you're going to need to make this work, obviously, is a good motherboard. And I do not recommend buying the cheapest motherboards like we have on the channel, right? So when I say cheapest, the cheapest H610 is not ideal. The cheapest B660M is not ideal. Um, why is that? Well, when you go into fiddle with power limits, you may not be able to actually do it. Uh, whether it be an Intel's XTU, there may be no adjustment. There may be minor adjustments you can make inside the BIOS. Really, folks, what you want is to be able to, to go all out um, and do unlimited with the CPU as well as the i9. All right, and when I say i9, i9, 12900, 12900F. So you also need a good power supply, right? This isn't a whole lot of watts. This is a 650 watt gold, but it is, uh, it's either semi-module or fully module, modular. I can't remember offhand. I've got so many power supplies. This is the kind of thing you need, though. Power supply like this is going to have up to uh, basically, you look at it this way, four 1x4 CPU power connectors or two 1x8s, right? However you want to look at that. 
Uh, so that's a good choice. You know, if you can't afford the gold, something like this 850BQ, the 750BQ by EVGA. Uh, I'm kind of partial to EVGA on the channel. That's going to have those additional CPU power connectors, all right? Oversizing the power supply. So if, you know, you go in and you see, oh, it says uh, I have an RTX 3070, and maybe it tells you you need a 600-watt power supply, whatever the exact number is. You may want to obviously increase that if you're going to start doing the power limits. Um, potentially, you know, looking at 700, 750 whatever it may be. The same thing applies if you're going to overclock, right? Um, you want to be able to go above and beyond and have some uh, headroom there. But other than that, folks, uh, gaming-wise, yeah, it is uh, stellar. And uh, was it, you know, affordable? Well, depends on how much money you got, right? Uh, 330 bucks out the door for this guy plus tax in the U.S., not too bad a price considering looking at some of the CPUs in front of it that cost, you know, nearly $500 or some of them I think did cost me over $500. And this thing kicks their butt. Uh, single core, multi-core, whatever, right? The only thing this thing doesn't beat some of these CPUs on the right side of me would be the L3 cache. Where does that matter? For most of us, it doesn't really matter. But if you were to do CPU mining, which I know some people that follow this channel do, some of my other channels, then you would want higher L3 clash, cache, excuse me, 25 megs, I believe it is, where, you know, 32, 64 is, is more ideal. But there you go, folks. Yes, I recommend this CPU. Thank you.